All right, the time is finally here. I don't know about all of you, but I have been super excited about this Bard release. Um, the Bard is my favorite class to play. So I am super excited to go over this. Let's jump into it. You don't play favorites, but you do love Bards. Big quality of life improvements for the Bard uh, for those checking out the new player's handbook, right? The new Bard has sort of the best of the 2014 Bard, as well as some of the best elements of the Unearthed Arcana Bard. That includes a return of the Bard's dedicated spell list. We had several versions that people saw in the Unearthed Arcana series where the Bard yeah. didn't have a spell list of their own and instead was leaning into other classes' spell lists. Through that process, we re-embraced the Bard having their own spell list, but as we'll discuss uh, very shortly, Bards, their magical secrets ability got enhanced in important ways. That Bard spell list uh, that has returned has been beefed up thanks to new spells in this book, as well as us even taking some spells that were already in the player's handbook and, and adding them to the Bard's list. And we've also given Bards the flexibility that our other full spellcasters have gained with their cantrips in that bards can now change one of their cantrips every time they level up. When it comes to their signature non-spellcasting ability, Bardic Inspiration, bards everywhere can rejoice that Bardic Inspiration now will last for up to an hour on the person that has it rather than just 10 minutes. And that will make it far easier for people to have a chance to actually use uh, their bardic inspiration. Because uh, I know many people have had that experience. This is fantastic. I love it already. I love it, love it, love it already. So the ability, the ability to change cantrip um, after, I'm assuming it's going to be after a long rest, um, that's huge. It gives the bard a little bit more versatility, even though, in my opinion, they were already one of the most versatile classes out there, um, especially later levels. <laughs> But for Bardic Inspiration to now last an hour instead of just 10 minutes is huge. There's so often before where, you know, I'd see a player give somebody Bardic Inspiration and they end up not needing it for, you know, you know, half an hour, almost an hour. And then all of a sudden they're doing some kind of check and it's like, well, you don't have Bardic Inspiration anymore. Too bad. That could have helped. It's not like a huge difference, uh, especially as far as like in-game time goes, right? But it's a big enough difference that it's going to make it so Bardic Inspiration is more helpful. You don't have to try and, and be like, oh, I want to use Bardic Inspiration before they do that. Uh, and it's like, they've already rolled. They didn't give you a chance to roll. You can't give them Inspiration anymore. They've already said... This is what I'm doing. Uh, here's my roll. It's too late, you know. Um, you can cast it earlier on, and it lasts an hour. And <laughs> if they don't need it right when you cast it, they might need it within that hour. So I'm loving this already. It makes them a little bit more helpful. Um, <laughs> let's keep going where the bard gives the bardic inspiration they forget to use it and oh my gosh the 10 minutes have passed yeah now you have a full hour uh before well you know before you're almost there and the bard player is reminding yeah. you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember you have bardic inspiration yeah um we also have taken uh the bard's expertise feature and made it so you get it sooner uh you now get it at level two we yes. have revised yes. all of the subclasses and included an entirely brand new one, the College of Dance, but we'll get to subclasses uh, in a minute. We've also made it because we know how much bards love to use bardic inspiration. We've made it easier for you to get uses of bardic inspiration back in the font of inspiration feature by letting you simply burn spell slots to get it back okay. uh, because oh. we've all had that experience whether we're playing bards or dming for bards or our friends are playing bards where sometimes the bard wants more uses of bardic inspiration more than they want to cast more of their spells yeah and so we 
recognizing that phenomenon, uh, whether it is by observing other people's games or just playing bards in our own. That's why we wanted to give bards the flexibility. Now, keep in mind, I've basically been a forever DM for 12 years, but when I started playing, the majority of what I would play was bards. I'd play bards and rogues almost exclusively. I have played every class ex uh, at least once except for ranger. Um, but that's neither here nor there. But I primarily played bard. And while, yeah, there was a lot of times where I'd be like, wow, I really don't have enough uh, bardic inspiration charges. I never once was like, hmm, you know, I think it'd be worth it to get rid of a spell slot to give bardic inspiration one more time. No, I would much rather use that spell slot to, you know, either damage the enemy monster or heal my teammate up. Um, I personally have never been like, yeah, let's let's burn a spell slot for, for Bardic Inspiration. It's useful, it is, don't get me wrong, but I don't really see it being useful enough to be worth an entire spell slot. Maybe later levels, when, when you've got access to the higher level spell slots and uh, you don't really need your first level spell slots, then it'll be worth it. Um, in fact, I don't really see anybody burning a spell slot past first, maybe, maybe second level spell slot, just for another charge of Bardic Inspiration. Um, so I think that that was kind of an unnecessary thing. Um... But it's cool that we have the option now. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe a lot of you guys who also play bards are like, no, I don't really need my spell slots. Let's let's give out more inspiration. Let me know how you feel about that. I think it's, well, I think it's a cool gimmick. I think it's going to be mostly unused. To essentially exchange one of their magical resources for one of their other magical resources. This is similar to what we did in the Druid, where there again is that ability to do some exchanging, really all about making it so that players have even greater control over what their characters do on adventures. Now, we also uh, took a look at the Bard's counter charm ability and we decided, let's actually make this useful. And so the new counter charm ability is now a reaction that the bard can use when someone around them is charmed or frightened, it gives them a new role against that effect. And when they make that new saving throw, they have advantage on it. I think this is going to make counter charm uh, see far more use than we've seen in the last 10 years. Yes, that, <laughs> that is great. Um, it's good to see them acknowledge that they made a mistake, um, which they've, they've done that a little bit here and there, but Watsi is notorious for being like, nope, we haven't made any mistakes. Counter Charm was a mistake. It's something that's never really seen any use because it's, like he said, it's been kind of useless. It's got a niche use that was ultimately kind of ignored um but now i it's going to see a lot more play uh, a lot more play um and i think this is i think, I think this is gonna be fantastic it's gonna be a great way to, to help protect yourself as well as uh, apparently nearby allies so giving advantage on a saving rolls mm. chef's kiss you know and it helps preserve uh a little detail that's been a part of the bard for decades because bards having a counter charm ability yeah. has been a part of the class uh, f going back to the game's earliest days now at level 10 bards still get magical secrets and this is now the feature where bards get to dive into other classes spell lists and we've made a couple of important tweaks here First, the bard no longer can dive into any sub any spell list rather in the game. And we made this change for one main reason, and that is outside of the bard, the cleric, the druid, and the wizard, 
spell lists are highly tailored to a kind of niche identity when it comes to a class like ranger, paladin, yeah. artificer, uh, to refer to a class not in the player's handbook. And so we wanted to make sure the bard was only looting the spell lists that are actually designed to be lootable. Yeah. That's also why the warlock is not here. The sorcerer is not here. It is really bard, cleric, druid, or wizard. Uh, these are the spell lists that we create to not only serve their classes, but also to be eminently lootable. And part of that is that the cleric, druid, and wizard spell lists in particular are the emblematic spell lists for the three main sources of magic. The wizard spell list is the emblematic spell list for arcane magic, the druid list for primal magic, and the cleric list for divine magic. People will see a similar change in the magic initiate feat, which also now does not allow you to dip into any spell list in the game. Instead, it is specifically these iconic spell lists that you can dip into. Now, even though that is a limitation that did not exist before, it is now paired with a greater amount of liberty. Because once now the bard reaches level 10, you may choose any of your prepared spells from these lists. So essentially, once you hit 10, you become similar to the name of one of your a one of your early class features, yeah. a true jack of all trades. And so uh, there is that little bit of constriction paired with a massive expansion in terms of versatility for the class. And it used to be that Magical Secrets gave you this versatility, but only at certain later levels. Now you can benefit from it at every level once you've received Magical Secrets. Perfect. Next up. Um, um. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that, to be honest with you. The whole point of, of a jack-of-all-trades is they're jack-of-all-trades. Um, saying that they can no longer dip into these other uh, spell lists, that's kind of one of the coolest things about the Bard before. And I know he said you could you can finally do that at level 10, but that's really banking on not multi-classing. Um, which... I really hope he's not trying to say that they're taking away multi-classing. Like, he's never... In none of the videos that I've watched so far has he said anything about you can't multi-class anymore. But... I don't know. Um, taking one of what was a key feature um, of the Bard and hiding it behind level 10, like, that's an okay thing to do. Definitely gives off the vibe of no more multi-classing. Um, I'm not too terribly worried about that. I'm sure we'll still go multi-class. I just, I don't, I don't like the, the thought process behind this. It's kind of, it's kind of like putting something essentially behind a paywall, kind of, you know, like, hey, here's this bard feature that's always been a bard feature. That's always been like a key thing of a bard, but, uh, you have to wait until you're level 10 now. I don't know. I don't know. I'll get used to it, I guess. We have a the revised version of Superior Inspiration. Right. Superior Inspiration uh, used to be at 20th level. It's now moved down to 18th level. And it used to require you to have zeroed out your Bardic Inspiration uses to get any back. That's no longer the case. Now, if you have fewer than two you get bardic inspiration back when you roll initiative until you have two. So what that means is if, if you have zero and you roll initiative, you will now have two. If you have one, you will now have two. Yeah. So that gives you some more flexibility. It also makes this feature uh, useful in more cases. So you, you will not feel the pressure to completely zero out your bardic inspiration uses to you know, be able to benefit from this. And then we have a brand new feature at level 20 for bards called Words of Creation. 
What this means is now all bards will always have prepared when they reach 20th level, power word heal and power word kill. A big part of the bard story is that they draw their mad magic from the words of creation that were uttered before time began right. to bring the multiverse into being and that their that their magic harnesses these words in various ways and that these words are often represented by spells like power word heal or power word kill so we thought let's make it so bards always always have when they reach reach their ultimate level yeah always have these spells prepared that's cool. That is. And it's, and it's got a great uh, lore reasoning behind that level 20 feet. Um, <laughs> but we're really banking on somebody sticking with one class for 20 levels. And I just, I, I've never seen it. Um, I allow, I allow my players to multi-class uh, as long as they've got the correct um, attribute. Like as long as whatever they want to multi-class into the at the required attribute is at thirteen, like it's supposed to be, multi-class away, right? I know that there's some DMs out there that don't allow multi-classing, um, and I've said it before. I'll say it again, and I'll say it until my face turns purple atop a mountain if I have to. They are wrong. Multi-classing is part of the game. It's a very interesting part of the game. It's it's a great way to show that your character is growing as a person. Um, and I don't... As cool as this level 20 feature is, I don't see people getting it because I don't see people being a bard from level 1 to level 20. So... Unless they just roll complete trash stats and their only stat over 12 is charisma but even then even then i can still see them multi-classing into sorcerer or warlock um not just being barred for 20 levels this is, as cool as the bard is now it sounds like you have everything you could ever possibly need from the the bard class by level 10 and you don't really need to be a bard up until level 10 um so i don't know it's a cool thing it's a it's especially since it's got like lore reasoning behind it. I don't see it seeing a whole lot of use as cool as it is. And in addition, when a bard casts either of these spells at 20th level, they can target not just the one target the spell normally targets, they can target a second target as well. So that means the 20th level bard can power word kill two creatures at once, but also power word heal two friends at once. That's I awesome. stand by my statement. Yeah. Starting off with subclasses, it's a big deal. We've got a new bard subclass, the College of Dance. Yes, and the College of Dance, this is a subclass we've wanted to introduce for a long time. A, just because it's fun to have the dancing bard, but also this leans into an element that the bard story text touches on in the new player's handbook. And that is the bard's magic, and even the magic that taps into the words of creation, those words are not necessarily verbal. Uh, that communication could be by sign, it can be by dance. There are many ways that communication is accomplished in our world, and so we wanted that to be reflected in the bard as well. And so the College of Dance, is all about not only this bard dancing, but also maybe even sometimes succeeding at getting their friends to dance with them. And uh, that that's particularly true in one of their later features. But starting right away in this new subclass, we have uh, a feature called Dazzling Footwork. And this feature is really a package of, of multiple features that makes you your performances better if they involve dancing. Uh, it gives you an unarmored armor class because we want a dancing bard yeah. to be able to, uh, if they want to be dressed like a dancer, but still have a, a decent AC. Uh, we've also made it so that this bard, whenever they use a bonus action to confer 
bardic inspiration can also make an unarmed strike. And, and remember, unarmed strikes uh, aren't necessarily punches. They could be kicks yeah. or whatever else a dancer would be doing as they are are leaping across the battlefield. There are options within having an unarmed strike now that are more than just doing damage. You can push people around, you can... Absolutely, the new unarmed strike is, is a package that includes three options. Deal damage, grapple, or shove. This actually then combos with some of their later abilities, uh, which I'll get into soon. Also, their unarmed strike deals more damage than a typical unarmed strike. Because uh, the uh, typical unarmed strike, unless you're a monk or some other character who has an enhanced unarmed strike, typically on a hit just deals one damage plus your strength modifier. Not true for the College of Dance Bard, uh, who if you decide to deal damage with your unarmed strike, you deal bludgeoning damage equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration die. Oh, wow. Plus your dexterity modifier. And this roll of your bardic inspiration die does not expend your bardic inspiration. Yeah. yeah. So now your, this bard, gets to use their bardic inspiration die also as a damage die for the damage that they're dealing with their very vigorous dancing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, then at level six, this is when uh, you uh, become very capable at trying to get your friends in on the in on the dance, and maybe you can have your whole party uh, do a uh, exciting flash mob uh, <laughs> inside battle. Uh, this ability is uh, the one where whenever an enemy uh, ends its turn within five feet of you. You can take a reaction, expend a use of your bardic inspiration to move up to half your speed, and then an ally of yours uh, can also try to do the same thing. None of this movement provokes opportunity attacks. And remember, the earlier level feature is yeah. whenever you expend bardic inspiration, whether as a part of a bonus action, action, or reaction, you can also make an unarmed strike. So that means someone comes up close to you, you use this ability, you're not only getting to move without provoking opportunity attacks, but you also get a free unarmed strike uh, as part of the bargain. Uh, this is very energetic dancing. Yes. <laughs> also, and then this is where we really, uh, at the same level, start unlocking the ability to really help your friends get in on the action is the new uh, tandem footwork feature. Whenever you roll initiative, you can expend one use of your bardic inspiration uh, and roll it. And then you and your allies get to add that as a bonus to your initiative. So this, this allows your group to leap into action potentially far sooner than they normally would in a battle. Uh, finally, uh, the subclass uh, with their, their level 14 feature uh, they get the evasion ability that rogues have as well as monks, uh, but they can share it. The College of Dance Bard, because dancing is often about dancing with someone else. Uh, if, if you can imagine the, the sort of situation we often had in mind with this is the the enemy spellcaster casts fireball and you and your buddy are within the blast as long as you're near each other you're not only going to benefit from your evasion ability but you can confer it to the friend next to you as well that's amazing so this this subclass has high mobility speed speed uh, and also some really great interaction uh, with their party mates yeah yeah absolutely so the next subclass <laughs> I'm loving this subclass. It is a huge departure from what you'd normally see from a bard. Um, the unarmed defense is, is a cool cool thing. Uh, the uh, uh, unarmed attack, now you get to roll your, your bardic inspiration die and add your dexterity. That is so cool. Um, I think the coolest thing is that level six feet where, where you can expend a spell slot or not a spell slot. I apologize. Uh, you can expend a, a bardic inspiration charge so that you and a nearby ally can move up to, up to half your movement without provoking attack of opportunity. 
Um, <laughs> that's that's a great way to protect yourself as well as an ally. And then if you're close enough, when you when you use this, you also get to make an unarmed strike. <laughs> as and this is all as a reaction. Um, I already know that at my table, at the very least, is going to see a lot of play because a couple of my players have already, already been incredibly excited about the subclass. Now fully seeing the extent of the subclass, I can see it being a normal subclass pick for the Bard. Um, without even seeing the other three subclasses, I already know this is going to be a staple. And, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. It looks, it sounds so much fun. I'm looking forward to seeing this in actual play. Is also new to the player's handbook, right. but not new to the game. So the College of Glamour uh, first appeared in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, and not only has migrated into the player's handbook, but also has actually quite a few updates to it. The new Beguiling Magic feature that you get at level three. This actually completely replaces the enthralling performance feature that the subclass used to have. This now ma makes it so that you always have the charm person and mirror image spells prepared. And from now on, whenever you cast an enchantment or an illusion spell, you can choose somebody and try to charm them or frighten them. You can do this a limited number of times per day. We did this because we really wanted to enhance our original vision for this subclass, and that is of being the preeminent beguiling bard subclass. That, you know, this is the, the pop star bard who is just, has so much presence and also fame magic. Uh, that people are just bedazzled right. uh, by this bard. And so that's why we've introduced uh, this new play option uh, with Beguiling Magic. We also, in the mantle of inspiration, have increased the amount of temporary hit points that this feature provides. And then in the mantle of majesty, we have made it so that you always now have the command spell prepared, which this feature relies on. And we've also now given you the ability to replace your, uh, rather restore your use of this feature by expending a level three or higher spell slot. This is something that we've done in a number of the features in the book that we didn't do 10 years ago in the 2014 Player's Handbook, and that is give, giving our spellcasting classes in their subclasses, sometimes this ability to burn spell slots to get their feature back. And this was, this was a sort of design shtick that we began experimenting with a number of years ago in products like Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And uh, we've seen people have really enjoyed having that option, and so that's why uh, we've now included it here. Perfect. Uh, then finally, in uh, the the subclasses, Unbreakable Majesty, I mean, just even the name of it, <laughs> uh, when a creature hits you with an attack for the first time on the turn, the creature must succeed on a charisma save or the attack misses. This replaces the future's original function, which was potentially causing the target, I mean, rather the attacker to have to target somebody else. Right. This, this turns it into more sort of a direct interaction between the attacker and the bard, where the bard can just be like, uh-uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm too glorious for you to harm me. Uh, do you really want to attack the bard <laughs> pop star? Nice. So we have uh, the College of Lore and the College of Valor. The College of Glamour is really, really cool. It's always been kind of a fun gimmicky thing ever since it came out. Um, well, I don't have a whole lot of players that, that enjoy playing Bard like I do. And by the time it came out, I was the forever DM already. Um, I mean, I started, like I said, I started playing. I've been DMing for 12 years, which means that I've been DMing since before 5e came out. 
Uh, I started with 3.5 because, you know, 4 sucks. But I have played a ham more than a handful of games of 5e. Um, but that was back when 5e was fresh. Um, so I personally have never had a chance to play the College Glamour. Um, my players have played it a couple times. And it's it's fun. It's cool. It's gimmicky. But it's, it's, it's fun, you know. Um, I'm sure it'll continue to see play. Uh, especially with the changes that they've made to it. Uh, I'm I'm happy it's one of the classes that made it through the uh, essentially the pasta strainer that was uh, the making of one D and D. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of the changes in play. The uh, two returning subclasses from 2014, because let us not forget that in 2014, the Bard had only two subclasses. Yeah. Uh, so the Bard's number of subclasses has doubled uh, in the new player's handbook. And College of Lore and College of Valor are our returning subclasses. College of Lore is the, in many ways, the classic Bard. Yeah. This is the Bard that is all about gathering stories and magic and historical information and using that to their and their friends' advantage. Whereas the College of Valor is very much the warrior bard, the bard singing on the battlefield. And, and, and some, some cultures have called this type of bard like a scald. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is the bard who is inspiring the troops uh, in many fantasy stories. But in, in the College of Lore, we have revised a number of things. So for example, the Magical Discoveries ability now functions a bit more like Magical Secrets does. It's specific to the Cleric, Druid, and Wizard spell list. But you can then uh, replace those when you level up as a bard. So you have more flexibility. You're not only getting to dip into these other classes spell lists, but then you can swap them out uh, as you level up if you decide that wizard spell you selected was not turning out to be as fun as you thought it would be, and you're, you're looking uh, over at that cleric or druid spell you'd rather have. You have increased flexibility here as a College of Lore bard. So also, um, Cutting Words, which is this bard's iconic feature yeah. has been enhanced in a subtle but important way. And that is it now works even on creatures who are immune to the charmed condition. Oh, nasty. Okay. Uh, and so used to be, particularly at higher levels, you would have that wah wah yeah, feeling yeah. as a lore bard where you're trying to use your cutting words and it happened to be a creature that was immune to being charmed. You now don't have to worry about that uh, uh, because it, it, it really turns out no matter what kind of creature you are, who really wants to be cut down by yeah, that, yeah. that sassy bar? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> those <laughs> words cut no matter what you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also, in the peerless skill feature, have made uh, an important improvement here. If you use your bardic inspiration using this feature, to try to turn a failed ability or attack roll into a success. If you do not succeed at turning it into a success, your use of the Bardic Inspiration is not expended. Oh, nice, yeah. So this now, this is now a feature that only gets expended if it succeeds at doing its job. Perfect. And we did this so that uh, the lore bard would feel more bold about using the feature because yeah. features like this, if they get expended, even if they do nothing, yeah. can can be frustrating and can it can be very easy for a player who especially really likes shepherding their character's resources. Yeah, you start hoarding your resources and never using it, it out of fear. Exactly, and and we all know that if you have an ability that you're always saving and so you never use it you basically don't have that ability yeah <laughs> and, and so we we want people to feel uh emboldened to use their class features perfect all right that brings us to a very popular i like how they didn't change a whole lot for the the college of lore in my opinion it has always been the best subclass to pick 
So there really wasn't a whole lot that needed to be changed in it. Um, I do like how they made it so that your, your resource economy is managed a lot easier. You don't have to worry about wasting uh, charges of Bardic Inspiration. But I think the biggest, best change is the change to Cutting Words. It's never made sense to me that it only worked on things that were not immune to charm. Because, I mean, you're not charming anything. An immunity to charm shouldn't stop... Like they said, it shouldn't stop them from getting their feelings hurt when they're you know trying to attack. So the fact that they've dropped that stipulation on Cutting Words is... Um, it's great, and I think a lot of people are going to feel the the relief of that. And, you know, I think we're, we're really lucky for them to finally realize that that was not something that made sense, and they fixed it. So, looking forward to that. Their subclass for the Bard, the College of Valor. So the College of Valor has a major update hiding inside its extra attack feature. Okay. And this is the main change here because College of Valor, super solid in 2014. Yeah. And what people are going to see here is largely what they saw in 2014. But a big exception to that statement, and that is uh, in the extra attack feature, we have made it so that you can cast one of your cantrips in place of one of your extra attacks. Oh. So it used to be that you got extra attack, which is awesome. But what we wanted is to give you the flexibility to, through the use of that extra attack, speak to either side of your identity of a Valor Bard, whether it's your weapon use or your spell casting. And so now, similar to what you see in the Eldritch Knight, uh, you can mix it up. Uh, with your extra attack, and if you want, use a cantrip uh, yeah. in place of one of those attacks. And so that that will give you a lot more tactical versatility uh, than you had before. And again, speaks again to that wish fulfillment. If yeah. you were playing this type of bard, you, you want to be mixing magic and, and you know, sword and, sword and sorcery. And along that same theme, the other change worth noting inside the College of Valor is that they can now use simple and martial weapons as spell casting focuses for their bard spells. Yeah. So okay. what that now means is they don't have to worry about what's in their hands or not because they can channel their magic through their weapons themselves, which is why in the art for this subclass, we show, we show this bard with a shield and a blade and given how this subclass works, this bar can cast their spell th through the blade that they're wielding. When you pre-order the digital physical... Oh, that kind of came out of nowhere there. <laughs> That's really cool. The, the, the minor changes to College of Valor was cool. That's another thing that I feel like didn't really need a whole lot of changes. It was pretty, it was pretty strong to begin with. Um, you know, in, in my experience... Every class always has a subclass that's just not worth picking. It's, it's not going to be played. Um, the the Bard has always been the exception to that because the, the 5e handbook back in 2014 uh, only had two college, two subclasses, and they're both great options. I think in this case, you know, the, like I said, there's always going to be one that's not going to be played as much, but all four of these subclasses are completely playable. They all have their own standalone gimmicks that make them good and worth playing. Um, I think if I had to venture a guess, I'd say the College of Glamour is going to be the least played, but it's still a very viable option, still a fantastic option that I'm sure a lot of people are going to choose. Um, and for me, I think it's fantastic because Bard's my favorite class. On the off chance I do get to play, uh, especially since... They're not making an artificer the what a core class, which you know is dumb. We all know that they're going to bring the the artificer class in down the road, um, but the artificer is is a class that I would play alongside the bard or instead of a bard, depending on what the rest of the party makeup was. But now. I'm for sure playing the part next time I get a chance to actually play. <laughs> um, 
And I'm not sure which which subclass I'd pick this time. Normally I go, I know I'm going College of Lore. Well, now I might do College Dance. College of Valor is a, a good choice, and College of Glamour is a good choice as well with all of its gimmicks. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how people are going to use these subclasses. Uh, and we're not going to see the same old rehashing of, of bards from the past. And I love the changes they made. This is going to be fantastic. Um, A plus. So thanks for watching.